study that we're presenting is a trial of allogeneic CAR T-cell therapy for patients with uh, relapse and refractory aggressive B-cell malignancies. That's going to include acute lymphoblastic leukemia in one core cohort and then uh, aggressive B-cell histologies in the other. The principal challenge with allogeneic CAR T-cell therapy is uh, graft, sorry, host versus graft, uh, meaning the as the immune system recovers from lymphodepletion, you really get this rapid drop-off in the allogeneic CAR T-cell product, as you might expect. Uh, the cells are, are foreign to this particular individual. The key question we wanted to answer is whether we could circumvent that by intensifying the lymphodepletion. And, you know, we would anticipate, if this works, seeing a higher peak, meaning we're going to get more expansion of this allogeneic CAR T-cell product, um, but also more persistence. So now instead of seeing a rapid drop-off in, in the CAR T-cells, as the immune system recovers, we would anticipate now seeing the CAR T cells, uh, you know, persist to a greater degree. So with that background, um, when we started the study, the, the first thing that we observed with this allogeneic CAR T cell product is, number one, as we increase the dose of the CAR T cells that were infused with a standard lymphodepletion, uh, that Yes, we could see some uh, modest increases in the, um, in the cell expansion, but by the time we got to around day 10, that rapid drop-off that, that I mentioned um, has been a problem for all allogeneic CAR T-cell products. What we did next um, in terms of the lymphodepletion was to uh, add initial day of fludarabine. So more specifically, we went from fludarabine at 30 per meter squared for three days to now giving it for four days. And we doubled the dose of cyclophosphamide. So we were giving 500 per meter squared for three days. Now we're doing 1,000 per meter squared for three days. And so that was the intensified lymphodepletion that was um, explored here. Uh, we, as expected for an allogeneic CAR T cell trial, enrolled very, very refractory patients. Uh, so I think the median was five lines for both the ALL cohort and the aggressive NHL cohort. But we saw in, in um, both cohorts that there were patients who had as many as 12 to 15 prior lines. So uh, just uh, emblematic, I think, of, of what we're seeing, uh, in, in, um, particularly in B-cell lymphomas, where uh, we're starting to see some new therapies make their way through clinical trials into the clinical space. Uh, but with those newer therapies, uh, we're not seeing cures. We're, we're sort of seeing some, you know, some activity, but but then um, unfortunately uh, uh, relapses that follow. So this was the cohort that we enrolled. Uh, the um, the intensified lymphodepletion uh, and the CAR T cell therapy proved to be safe. Um, by which I mean to say, we did not observe any severe CRS. We had one grade three case of uh, ICANS, but uh, um, all the other patients across both cohorts, uh, no severe um, neurologic toxicity. We observed no graft versus host, which I think is really important. Uh, and we did see um, uh, grade three infections, uh, grade three and above infections in, in both cohorts. I think a reflection of the patients that we enrolled, but also that intensified lymphodepletion that I mentioned. I think the really, really cool piece to this is what we observed then in terms of the uh, pharmacokinetics. Um, we achieved a peak expansion uh, measured by CAR-T transgene in, into the 10 to the fifth range. So, you know, we're, we're at that range now that is similar to what we achieved with autologous CAR-T cell products. Uh, this was a market increase uh, over what we had achieved with uh, standard lymphodepletion. So again, using the same cell dose, just enhance, enhancing lymphodepletion, dramatic increase in the peak. But what was really also amazing is uh, we also saw that translate into persistence. So now we're still measuring these allogeneic CAR T cells at day 28. That's a really major step forward, I think, for allogeneic CAR T cell therapies. You know, we're not building in... Um, you know, CD52 knockouts and CAMPATH as, as the allergene group has done. 
uh, we're not sort of um, tweaking the system in any other way except, you know, again, to enhance the lymphodepletion as I described. And so uh, I think that this is, um, as I said a minute ago, really, really important for the field. So this translated into improved response rates, as you might expect. The overall response rate in the NHL cohort was 69%, of which 56% were CRs. And uh, in the ALL cohort, um, it was 80% um, overall at, and, and complete permission rates. Uh, and so Definitely. there was something really peculiar that was falling out of the data. What do I mean by that? I had mentioned that these patients were heavily pretreated, 12 to up to 12 to 15 prior lines. It turns out that a subset of the patients had also received prior autologous CAR T cell therapy. So we saw in total five patients, including one ALL patient and four of the NHL patients, uh, had received a prior autologous CD19 directed CAR T cell therapy. And so we wanted to take a, a little bit of a deeper look at that cohort. Um, so in these five patients, we observed an overall response rate of 100% and a CR rate of 80%. And so I think that was a little bit unexpected for us. So we took a deeper dive and, and we wanted to understand then, you know, not just the response rate, but, but how did the durability of these responses with the allogeneic product compared to the durability they had with their original autologous product. And in three out of the five patients, we actually saw a longer duration of response with the allogeneic CAR-T product. And again, built on this, um, this principle of enhanced lymphodepletion. You know, when we talk about durability, I, I think that, um, you know, some of these patients are still an ongoing follow-up, but we have you know, two ongoing remissions beyond uh, six months, two additional with a uh, response at uh, around 140 days, one of which you went on to a subsequent uh, allogeneic transplant. In the ALL cohort, uh, you know, we have uh, one of our patients uh, who had actually failed two prior allogeneic transplants, uh, uh, you know, still an ongoing remission now over nine months later. Um, we also have another patient who was uh, successfully bridged um, to an allogeneic transplant right around 90 days. This was my patient, and I can tell you he had failed blinitubumab and inatuzumab and chemotherapy and all the things that we had um, tried giving him. So this was a pretty uh, amazing result. He had gotten an MRD negative uh, remission after the uh, uh, allogeneic uh, CAR and, 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 again, sufficient to get him to the transplant. So we're seeing some really um, deep remissions. We're seeing some of these really uh, prove to be durable. And we're seeing um, in, in some of these cases, uh, more specifically in three out of the, the five cases where they had prior autologous um, CAR-T, that the remission we're getting with the allogeneic product is longer. All of this, I think, are reasons for excitement. It, it tells us that we're able to successfully deliver an allogeneic product with an enhanced lymphodepletion, get meaningful remissions, and, and take advantage of those, uh, of those remissions um, for these patients with the allogeneic transplant for our ALL patients. Uh, and, and I think it also sets the stage for what we want to do next, which is really try to get a deeper sense of what is this going to do for other patients um, who've progressed after an autologous CAR-T where right now I would argue that's a major, major unmet medical need. So that in five minutes is a quick summary of our data.